so um, screenplay, production, you know, acting, directing, like how is how much multitasking does that <laughs> implies? I always wonder how does a schedule like that looks like? Oh, <laughs> well, it, it, it's le- it's l- it's complicated, but it's less complicated than it sounds because the writing obviously is done ahead of time. And as a producer, my job was really about the front loading, you know, like writing a screenplay, getting the actors together, getting a team. Mm-hmm. The tough part is is the days where I was uh, in front of the camera and behind the camera. But my brother's a director. And so on those days, and they were all the first two weeks of, of the shooting, I had my brother behind the monitor. Mm-hmm. And so he was sort of like my outside eye. Um, so those days were, were the, they were less fun. And once I got that first two weeks out of the way, I could just concentrate on, on being the director, and boss everybody else around. Mm-hmm. How gratifying is it to get actors of that caliber who want to be a part of your project? Well, it's, it's fantastic. It, it's for many reasons. One, to think that Nicole and Russell would, would read the script very quickly and get involved means that you know you've got very passionate partners and you know that, that uh, the movie will get seen by more people because they're, you know, movie stars. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a little nerve-wracking for me because Russell, <coughs> Russell and Nicole, as Australians, are people that I've looked up to when I was going through drama school and... So I was a little bit intimidated by that. But, you know, I had, a, and, and Lucas, you know, who's so amazing to, to think that of all the great opportunities that he has in his hands right mm. now that, that he was willing to sign on. So, mm. look, I lo- obviously I love actors because I am an actor. I think that they, they're incredibly intelligent problem solvers and compassionate human beings. And it's great to just let them work and watch them solve problems. And, so I had a, had a, I had a very privileged time. And all the, the performances, was, all the characters, without exception, were so nuanced. And I thought it just made it more, way more believable. And it needs to be believable because it's not some tale of the past. You know, it still happens now. Mm. Was that a, constant, uh, a conscious choice of you? Because, you know, you could have had an evil therapist or something, but it was all very believable. Yeah, well, look, I... I Taking a lead from the memoir, Garrett was very mm. empathetic towards his parents. I mean, he dedicated the book to his parents. Mm. The therapist, his parents, I went and met everybody because it was important for me to understand everybody's point of view. And I don't believe... <clears throat> see, before I read the book, I thought, I'm going to read this book, it's going to be vicious, there's going to be blood on the pages, it's going to be about hateful people sending their kids off to these things therapists who were just like hitting kids and and it was something very different because I was very uh, it was confusing to think that the parents did what they did out of love mm. to the, like they loved him so much they believed with their system of understanding their system of belief that something was wrong with him that he was sinful that he'd forsaken God that were trying to help him and I was like how does how does a society get to that place where that is an act of love and that helping actually hurts him more, but that his mother was willing to acknowledge that, realize she'd made a mistake, redesign her prism of religion and put her protective maternal wing around her son and say, I don't care what I'm supposed to believe. This kid is more important to me than anything else. Mm. And that hopefulness was the reason to make the film.